Hello and welcome to the continuing tutorial series on Poser Pro 10 2014 by Renderosity. I'm Mark Bremer and in this movie we'll take a look at comparing the soft body dynamics or the bullet physics engine as it relates to cloth and kind of compare that to the cloth room. We have another tutorial where we have gone through the cloth room and see how that works. There are ways you may and may not want to use the soft body dynamics to do the same thing. I have the same exact scene that we started with when we were working with the cloth dynamics and that's our our sexy Andy layering on a cube here just a basic cube out of the library and a cloth plane. Now we're going to be working with a window called bullet physics control. Now bullet physics where does this come from? It is a third party developed software or program that goes ahead and calculates the physical interactions between hard and soft bodies or rigid and soft bodies. Now soft bodies includes cloth but it includes lots of things like tires. With the physics engines there are capacities to make things inflate and behave realistically as say you'd have a tire driving over an object. You can use it to create the jiggly people that walk, all sorts of really fun stuff. We'll take a look and concentrate just on the cloth applications in this movie. Now we're running out of screen space here in the little small area I have to do the tutorial. So let me go ahead and close our library window here. And you can't see it, but the little option right there to close. There is a tutorial on customizing the interface if you would like to view that that has been recorded earlier on. Now I want to dock this to the side here. There we go. So now we have our scene and we've got the bullet physics simulation going on right here. Now, like most things with uh, Poser, there are steps to go through, and I'm shrinking this interface here just a little bit so we can see the entire bullet physics window right here. So, like the cloth room, we have to create a simulation. Currently, there's none to choose from. So, I'll select New, and let's name this one, I don't know, how about Blanket? Whoops, let me highlight that, and choose OK. Once this is done, it kind of walks you through the system, just like the cloth room, but there are different things to consider at this point. There is the start and end frame for a simulation. If we were going to do that, that is just like the cloth room, where you can have it calculate for a number of frames. There is an option for live simulation. You don't want to click this until you set some of the other items in uh, place here. So the first thing we want to do is take a look at objects. Now when we click on objects we get a modal dialog box that pops up and there's three options and it's really important to be clear on what these all mean. Choreographed means that you as the 3D operator are in control of what's going on. This is what we will want to engage here. Now I'll compare these back and forth. We can see everything in the scene. We've got Andy. There's no checkbox by Andy, you'll notice, and if we disclose it, we see a bunch of checkboxes. But there is one for the cloth plane and for the box. I want to control the ground, so I'm going to leave that checked. I want to control the box. But we want to clothify, as it were, or create the bullet soft body dynamics. And you've probably already come across the bullet engines if you've played with Xbox, Playstations, a whole host of... Uh, gaming platforms use bullet to do cloth and hard body interactions so just to let you know that there's a nice pedigree behind it but back here to rigid dynamics if I click on this we see everything in the scene and we see Andy as well with a checkbox you might think well I don't want Andy to move here I just want the cloth to drape across him the reason you wouldn't ever really want to check this, or at least for the most times, is that when you do this, it prohibits animation of Andy. He turns into a mannequin. And uh, by mannequin, I mean he's in one position and doesn't move. So the only thing we'd want to do here is if we had objects in the scene that were supposed to drop and fall, if we had a bunch of spheres and wanted to make marbles or something like that, we would designate those as a rigid dynamic target. So we'll come over here to Soft Dynamics. Same selection, but the only thing we're going to clothify or make soft is the cloth plane. You can make people soft. You can make all sorts of things soft and control that. And you'll kind of see, well, some ways we can play with that as we go on with it. So again, choreographed, I want to control the ground in the box. I also want to control Andy. And by that, I need to engage a whole host of these, the larger body parts right here. 
if I don't enable these and then we have the cloth go across the character, unless it's checked here, the cloth will go right through the object. So I'm just getting the large parts. I'm not going to worry about fingers necessarily. I just want arms, shoulders, that type of thing, legs, thighs. And sure, we'll hit some feet and stop there. With that done, I can go ahead and collapse this and simply choose OK. Now, if we want to go ahead and just see this in action, I can go ahead and turn on Live Simulation, and it immediately takes place. And we see it continuing to do some things. It looks like Andy's got a beating heart. The program dynamically, continually is running physics simulations to see how things behave. Now, how do we change this? How do we work with it? Well, we can go ahead and come into Properties if we want. We'll come over here to Object and not Ground. We need to come all the way down to Cloth Plane. When that happens, we go ahead and get some controls over this right now. Now you can see that the cloth has gone through Andy quite a little bit, and it's not conforming really nicely to the cube. This is one of the issues of working with the soft body dynamics in the Bullets engine that is different than the cloth room, so I need to point that out. While we get a cool level of interactivity with the Bullets soft body dynamics, it isn't necessarily as faithful as the cloth room might be, and we'll take a look at working with clothes in just a second. So with this done, let's go ahead and change some of the settings. Since we're having cloth going through the character, then I'll come here to the collision margin, and let's just bump this up to like 0.2. And we see it immediately kind of update. Yeah, it's still going through him a little bit. If I try that again and say 0.3, we see now, okay, the, the cloth is kind of floating and it's, it's actually falling off the character right here because of friction. So with the live action going on right here, live simulation, the cloth is dynamic the entire time regardless of whether you're rendering an animation. This is a really cool thing, in fact, when you're doing some posing, and we'll do that next here with constraints. So I'll go ahead and turn off live simulation by deselecting the checkbox, and I'll say clear simulation. Now, what are some ways that I might want to use this? Well, you can go ahead and calculate the simulation again. And if we do that, it'll just calculate for a set number of frames, and then it's done. So that is an option. But something else that makes it very nice when you're working with something that needs cloth, like, say, awnings on a restaurant or something like that, is that we've got the ability to engage constraints. So let's do that right now. I'll uh, rotate my scene just a little bit. Under Constraints, we've got the ability to create new. And there are three items right here. Object constraint, which is where if we parented the cloth to another object, like if we made a cape for Andy out of this, we could parent that, an object constraint, and it would follow Andy around. There's the animated constraint, we'll look at that in a second, and then there's self-constraint, which we'll look at first. Self-constraint gives you the ability, you see a little uh, paint palette right here, that is to actually control the influence or how significant the changes are in certain areas. Think of a flag that's connected to a line on a pole. That is a constraint, just like there is in the cloth room, where you can constrain cloth with some of the other tagging features in there to do the same thing. So if I click on this, we've got some options, click on the palette that is, we have some options with dynamic weights. We can make the cloth more dynamic, more constrained, which is where I'll leave it. We can smooth the transitions. We can increase weighting. I've got uh, the soft paintbrush selected. And if I move it over the scene just a little bit, we can see that's yeah, a, a reasonable size. So I won't change that right now. There is an invert colors option right here. And let me show you what happens when you paint first. I'm going to paint just the corners. Click and drag just a little bit. Move it around right here and let me move this out of the way so we can get over to our last corner over here personally when I work with this I kind of like to uh, keep it similar with weather radar that's my problem not yours and if I invert the colors right here the green area is least constraint the hot red area just like a thunderstorm is red and that just is easier for me to remember so that's the reason the options there not for me but for well people like me. So I'm going to go ahead and just intensify that where I see the red. I know it's got the maximum constraint. Now with that done, I can go ahead and close this window. All we've done is just created some constraints right here. So if I rotate this object 
And then we go ahead and say, let's look at a live simulation. We'll see that immediately our cloth goes into action. And that's really cool. When you're setting up scenes where you need to have certain things take place like this, this can be a fantastic time saver. So, since the cloth is selected right now, under cloth plane, we can go ahead and use some of the properties right here. On, for example, the Y translation here, I can go ahead and lower or raise this up. I can go ahead with the rotation on the Y rotation and tilt this a little bit like we were doing something with an awning. Now this has a sheet quality. If we wanted to come in here and dynamically change uh, some of the settings, we could do that. We come to Properties and we come down and say, you know what, I want greater linear stiffness. And let's bump this up to something like 1. Well, it isn't sagging quite so much. If we want uh, different items, we can go through and adjust each one of these if we don't want it quite as heavy. Now, internal pressure. This is one where if we increase it, we'll notice that when we go to another little capacity right here. But you can see it working right now. Let's take a look at another one of the constraints right here. And I'll say let's delete this self-constraint. And let's go ahead and clear the simulation. Let me zero out the rotations that I went ahead and put in here. And I'll leave it high just like that. So for a new constraint, I'll go ahead and click New, but this time we'll do Animated. Now watch the interface over here on the left real closely as I click Animated. I do that, and there is a little plus sign in here that's hiding underneath the cloth. I can click on this and drag it up just a little bit to get it above the cloth. This is a dynamic control point, a handle that you can use to go ahead and pose the cloth. So you can select it, and you can go ahead and move it with the regular tools right here. So if I bring the Y translation down, I can lower it and put it right at the center of the cloth. But then it's very, very important to get some very unpredictable type of activities to set the handle position, which is this button right here under constraints. This lets the program know that this is the master control for the cloth. Now you can have multiple points as well. So if we wanted to, like in the preceding constraints, we did the corners, you can create additional handles for the cloth and place them around the corners of it. So you could move them independently and animate that if you wanted to. For this example, we'll just use one. Now I'll go ahead and come to our paint palette options here. And we've got the same options, more and less constraints, all those types of things. What I want to do is paint some greater constraints right around this control point. And I'll leave it like that. I could go ahead and blend it a little bit more. We could drag these out to create uh, just a little more variation in it. But when I go ahead and close this now, and we come back to Live Simulation, I'll turn that on, and the program immediately starts working with the cloth like this. I can go ahead with the Translate tool selected. I can go ahead and move it around the scene and position it. So this is just a super way to go ahead and get some believable cloth shapes very easily. And again, the same items apply to the cloth planes. There has to be enough polygons for it to bend efficiently. If you've got a very low res type of plane that you're working with, you won't get these nice believable type of cloth deformations that are going on. Now, if I come back to properties, and we happen to go with internal pressure right here, and I increase this to like one we see it inflate a little bit. And this is how you would work with tires or something like that, or sealed objects, or distending stomachs or something like that. You can continue to increase the pressure. We'll go ahead and go up to two. That would allow it to move out like this. So if I move it around the scene, we still get this dynamic quality, but it's a little bit different and it's going crazy right there. So we can go ahead and say, all right, let's take this back down to zero and it'll go ahead and look like normal cloth. So really fun interactions. Well, let's compare this now, these cloth plane, with working with clothes. I'm going to go ahead and close this scene. Don't want to save it. We'll just create a new scene. Of course, Andy comes in by himself. Since the last setting I had was to have the bullet, bullet physics window parented in here, a customized interface, it's still there. Now I'm going to zero out our character figure, and we want to, apparently I can't read today, zero figure. There we go. 
We'll bring in the same prop that we had created and exported in the cloth tutorial, and that is a tank top. We went over why it was a good candidate. Some clothes are not a good candidate, and we're going to go ahead and import that file. Import, that happens to be a 3D studio. I'll leave the settings right here as they are, and we've got tank top in a 3DS format. I'll click open, and it comes in certainly much larger than we need it. So let me go ahead and get the translation and bring it up. We'll scale it to our character a little bit. Let's zoom in so we can see what's going on a little more closely. Translate that up. And then we'll go ahead and scale this down just a little bit. Let me rotate our scene here so I can see what's going on. Yeah, that's OK for now. So we need to create a new simulation. I'll do that. We'll leave it, uh, well, let me just name this tank top. And choose OK. Now again, I have to say the soft body dynamics has all sorts of applications from jello to mushrooms to whatever you might want to have jiggly and bendy. But we're just going to concentrate on how it might be used with cloth again right here. So with this done, we've got our tank top simulation. We need to go through the same thing with the objects again. So I'll say, you know what, let's go ahead and hit the, the major areas of Andy right here. Again, if we don't check these larger areas, the cloth will just go through this. So I'll just get these set. Hopefully in a future release, there'll be a way to go ahead and do this more quickly with a general checkbox. And right collar, shoulder, forearm, hand. It's painful to watch somebody do this, isn't it? And we'll go ahead and do thigh because the shirt might go ahead and collide with that and we'll skip the feet for now. Rigid dynamics, no, there's nothing really I need to worry about for rigid dynamics right here. And for soft dynamics, we need to go ahead and select the tank top and then choose OK. With that done, we can go ahead and simply say live simulation. It thinks about it and oh, it falls off of them right here. So this is where we need to go ahead and turn off live simulation, clear simulation to bring the tank top back up. Let's come here to our object tank top. Now that's off the screen so you can't see me select it, but it's at the very bottom of the list right there. I can go ahead and increase the collision margin right here to 0.2. Let's see if this works for us this time. A little bit better, but it's still falling. So now we're seeing something in a dynamic capacity where you might decide, you know what, nice, but I should probably go to the cloth room and make this work and have it bind with the character or respect the character a little bit more in its movements and that's a very fair assessment to make. The cloth room and soft body dynamics each have their place. There is overlap and there's times you might want to use either one. There is no right one or wrong one for your scene. It's simply what's going to work best as you work with it. To stop this from falling through the character right here, we may want to go ahead and increase friction a little bit. Let me cre create that uh, to a level of one. Let me go ahead and increase this to something like 0.25. We'll see if this uh, works again, and we can just calculate a simulation if we want to see how that's hanging. Mm, okay, let's turn on live simulation, which is what we would do if we were animating. That's, it's working okay, but we get a little continual motion right there. We can rotate around the scene. We're getting some nice cloth bends, but it's not clingy. It's hanging, so we could go ahead and keep tweaking these items here in terms of working with linear dampening, all these type of capacities. But that is working with soft body dynamics with cloth inside of Poser Pro 10 and Poser 2014.